Here we have a red blood cell, an erythrocyte, and we know that the A, B, O group antigens are on the surface of the red cell. And with the recess factor, it's exactly the same. The recess factor is an additional factor, and it's either present or absent on the red cells. So here we have a diagrammatic representation of the recess factor antigen. It's a protein, and in fact it may be a membrane transporter proof protein. There's a currently debates about what the recess factor actually does in biochemical terms. But it's either present or absent. Now it's actually quite complicated, there are many subgroupings to the recess factor. The last time I checked there was about 49 subgroupings. But the main one, the important one, the antigenic one that we need to know about is the D factor. So when we're talking about the recess factor, we're really talking about the D factor. So it's important to realise how this factor comes to be present on the erythrocyte. And it is entirely genetic. It's transmitted by Mendelian inheritance. So the recess factor is coded for by a dominant gene. And the chromosome is number one. So here we have a diagrammatic representation of the chromosome number ones. We have a homologous pair of chromosomes. And the recess factor is going to occupy one of the positions on that chromosome. So this gene in this position contains the genetic information required to synthesize the proteinaceous recess factor. Now a dominant gene is one which will be expressed if present. And the recess factor is coded for by a dominant gene. So by convention, we denote dominant genes as a capital letter. And the recessive gene, which would result in no recess factor being present, we represent with a lowercase r. Now, if there's recess factor incompatibility problems leading to hemolytic disease of the newborn, that always occurs with a recess negative mother. Now, in the UK, about 15% of the population are recess negative. So it would be reasonable to expect 15% of women to be recess negative. In Asian populations, Chinese and Bengalis, for example, it's as low as 1% to 5% of women that are going to be recess negative. But in the UK, it's about 15%. And we have a homologous pair of chromosomes with the relevant gene. So if the mother is recess negative, that means she does not have a recess positive gene. So we can know for sure if a woman is recess negative, or indeed if anyone is recess negative, they will have two small R's there. They will both be recessive genes. But if someone is recess positive, then one or both of these genes may be dominant. So if this, if someone was a R, are, they had two copies of the dominant gene, I think you can see that they would be recess positive. But if someone was R, R with one dominant and one recessive gene, the gene for the production of the D recess factor is dominant, so it would be expressed if present. So that allows us to do some genetic calculations or genetic plans to decide the probability of recess factor incompatibility occurring resulting in hemolytic disease of the newborn. Because this is only going to happen with a recess negative mother and a recess positive father. So we know that the mother is going to be recess negative. She's going to be two small r's and the father could be one large r and one small r. He could be carrying one copy of the recess gene and the other position on the other homologous chromosome could be the recessive gene. In other words, this father is heterozygous for the trait, whereas the mother is clearly homozygous recessive. 
Now to reproduce, the mother will make ova, the father will make sperm, and these are going to recombine. So one possibility is that combining with that, and that will give us a recess positive fetus. Alternatively, that could combine with that one, and that will give us a recess negative fetus. Alternatively, it could be that one with that one, resulting in a recess positive fetus because there is one copy of the recess gene present, which of course is dominant. Or it could be that one combining with that one, which will give us two small r's. So here we see the probability is 50-50 that any particular fetus will be recess positive. And the presence or absence of the recess factor is entirely genetic. Now alternatively, we know the mother's going to be recess negative. The father could be homozygous for the trait with two recess positive genes. Phenotypically, the father is still, of course, recess positive. In this case, the mother produces ova, the father produces sperm. So this could combine with that one, giving us RH. Because there is one copy of the recess positive gene, that is going to give us a recess positive fetus. Likewise with this possible combination, in fact, likewise with that one, and indeed likewise with that one. So in this case, even though the mother is recess negative, 100% of potential fetuses formed by this union would be recess positive. Therefore, the probability of recess factor incom incompatibility occurring is going to be high. So the recess factor, really quite simple. It's either there or it's not. It's coded for by a single dominant gene, which may be present in homozygous or heterozygous form in the father. So consider recess factor incompatibility whenever we have a recess negative mother and a recess positive father.